Welcome back. The Embassy of the Royal Kingdom of Thailand held a forum about Thailand's sufficiency economy philosophy as a pathway to sustainable development. Donna Cueto has more. The Embassy of the Royal Kingdom of Thailand, in cooperation with the Asian Institute of Management, on June 9 held a forum about Thailand's sufficiency economy philosophy as a pathway to sustainable development. The event was held to commemorate the 70th anniversary celebration of His Majesty King Bumibol Alduyade's accession to the throne. Uh, today, on the 9th of uh, June, uh, it is the 70th anniversary of uh, His Majesty King Bumibol Alduyade's accession to the throne 70 years ago. So, uh, the Embassy of Thailand in Manila uh, organize uh, this activity with AIM in order to uh, get audience to empower them how to proceed on agriculture especially with the philosophy of uh, His Majesty the King which is uh, sufficiency economy so I believe that uh, for this event uh, the audience and government sectors uh, we'll learn more how to proceed uh, for sufficiency economy, especially when the new president of the Philippines will come into power on the 30th of uh, June. The sufficiency economy philosophy was put in place in Thailand by the king, uplifting the agriculture there. The Thai people also became more empowered as a result, making them more self-reliant in agriculture. Vira Sakdi Futrakul, Thailand's Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs, explained the sufficiency economy philosophy as a people-centered approach that focused on the virtues of moderation, reasonableness, and self-immunity. Sufficiency economy is a philosophy guiding life conceived and developed by His Majesty King Bumi Ponadunyade as both a way of life and an approach towards sustainable development. This philosophy has a people-centered approach resting on three pillars, moderation, reasonableness, and self-immunity. Minister Futrakul explained how this philosophy has uplifted the livelihood of the Kogam farmer in Thailand and had even drastically reduced the poverty rate of Thailand from 60% in 1990 to a mere 10% in 2014. And uh, one of the central philosophy of this is people center and that uh, it accords with the UN's goal of no one left behind. And that's why um, this philosophy seeks to help the people, uh, especially uh, the farmers who are usually uh, at the bottom rung of the economy, even though they comprise the largest group in the workforce, two-thirds, nearly 60 percent, how are we able to lift them from poverty? That's why through this philosophy we were able to reduce in a period of 14 years from 1990-2014 from 60% uh, of people living under poverty line to now only about 10%. In this philosophy, the king pushed for self-reliant Thai families who would not want for food. People became more productive and the Thai economy grew. Dr. Ernesto Pernia, the incoming head of the National Economic and Development Authority, under the new administration said this sufficiency economy philosophy of Thailand was responsible for pushing Thailand into an agricultural leader, particularly in rice production in the ASEAN region. Uh, Thailand, for example, has, clear, has a clear, distinct comparative advantage in terms, of, in terms of agriculture, especially rice. So sta staple food, staple food, rice and uh, other more basic uh, food items, clearly Thailand is self-sufficient. The sufficiency economy principle can be of benefit to the ASEAN region, according to AIM professor Dr. Federico Macaranas, who is also the executive director of the AIM Policy Center. Or ASEAN region. ASEAN can be self-sufficient in many raw materials because we are a major natural resource base for China and India the two biggest countries that will demand more of our resources. Ambassador Upati Singh and Vice Minister Futrakul also explained how this would be a good example that can be followed in the whole ASEAN community. 
because ASEAN is a big region, uh, 650 million, and we believe that uh, each member, you know, has an advantage, has a comparative advantage on certain things, and we stay together, you know, we do our best, and this is what the region can do. In order to create an attractive economic community, because if we are not able to create such an attractive economic community, we will not be able to draw uh, in for, uh, foreign investment, which would help to generate economic growth. So, uh, but at the same time, if we are all uh, have national resilience, community resilience, we will be in a better bargaining position vis-à-vis, -vis, you know, the, the economic giants. So that's why we think that uh, uh, this philosophy could help us in. The Asian Institute of Management said it was very much honored to have been chosen as a partner in the forum, as the institute itself was very much impressed with this philosophy of the King of Thailand. For Eagle News, I am Donna Queto and I am one with 25. Meanwhile, Thailand's ailing King Pumipon Adulya Day is recovering well after a recent operation to improve blood flow to his heart. The palace said the latest in a series of major medical procedures for the 88-year-old king. Pumipon is the object of an intense personality cult and his fair health is a matter of significant public concern. On Tuesday, doctors performed a series of angioplasty procedures without anesthetic using balloons and stents to widen multiple arteries in his heart. In the latest update on his health released by the palace late Sunday, doctors said the king was making progress with blood pressure and breathing back to normal. An electrocardiogram also showed improved blood flow to the heart, the statement added. The king is confined to a wheelchair and rarely is seen in public. He has spent most of the past two years hospitalized in Bangkok for a series of ailments including bacterial infections, breathing difficulties, and hydrocephalus or water on the brain. Pumipon is the world's longest reigning monarch and most Thais have never known life under another king. He is largely seen as a unifying force in a nation bitterly divided along political lines. Anxiety over what will happen after his reign ends is considered an aggravating factor in the country's past decade of tumultuous politics as competing elites jostle for power and influence before the transition. Information on the monarchy is tightly controlled by the palace. Throughout much of the last two years of Pumipon's hospitalization, updates have been rare. But in recent weeks, the palace has issued a string of health announcements.